Good evening, everyone. In this video tonight, I'd like to ask a question to Taro. What comes to his mind when he thinks of you? I have four different tarot card decks in front of me. Number one, two, three, and four. If you'd like to have this reading, please think of a person and choose your deck. And take your time, please. Have you chosen your deck? So let's have a look then. Starting with the deck number one. This is Chinese tarot deck by US Games. What comes to his mind when he thinks of you? What comes to his mind when he thinks of you? Let's have a look. Okay, we have <clears throat> a female here. Interesting. What comes to his mind when he thinks of you? So we have a situation. A female who is like a leader. A female who is older. Maybe a little bit uh, mature, I would say, in age. Not 20s, I would say 30s. If not, if you're young and you got this card, it can mean that you're basically very mature, very like a leader, have leadership qualities and things like that. And there are always other girls behind you and you're like a leader. I don't know if this is like a dance troupe or some sort of like a hobby group. It, you could be a leader in some sort of um, sport or some sort of hobby or something like that. So he always associates you like uh, with being the leader of a group. And when he thinks about you, he sees that group, you know, women. Now, like giving orders, you know, to them, like teaching them. It can be maybe a teacher, but I'm feeling like more like sports. So we get that sort of situation. And of course, we have money, we have money, this is um, <clears throat> a baby with uh, treating lots of money with a lot of ease. So it can be that you're doing business or something like that, it can be that you're selling something, you know, and uh, there is some sort of trade going on. And then the last card... We see also a man trying to sell his goods. So, I kind of think that when they think of your name, they imagine what you do as a profession. They imagine, uh, imagine uh, who you are as a person, you know, what you do as a profession. Maybe they remember where they met you. And if it's a work environment, uh it's not surprising here. And I'm feeling you're like a leader. Uh, someone who comes forward, uh, talking to people, uh, doing things like a face of something. Like you're the face. Like you see this woman here in the front. So you're like her. And then we see a baby. So maybe you have a child who works with you. But it's just the feeling that... Um, you know, you're just like um, juggling lots of money. Like you easily go about this. Like it's your, some sort of area where you're good at. You're naturally good at this. And uh, and here also, this is a person, like a salesperson coming forward and showing his artwork, crafts, you know, what he's made. He's made these wands and he's like showing 
uh, to people if they're interested to buy them. And of course, the walls are always like financial security. The walls are financial security. And yeah, we feel strength here, power. So that's how I think they see you. That's how they remember you. When they remember your name. When they think about you. Yeah, okay. So this was our reading number one. Now let's move on to our reading number two. This is our reading number two, the deck number two, and it's Alistair Crowley's deck. Okay, and the question stays the same. What comes to his mind when he thinks of you? What comes to his mind when he thinks of you? We're pulling three cards. Okay. Okay, in this we have strife here, futility and chariot. So here I'm getting the feeling a little bit more aggressive, I would say. A little bit more strong. All the cards are very masculine. All the cards are very strong, uh, energetic. This is wands, this is swords, this is chariot. So like in the first card we'll talk about some sort of uh, uh, strife, well, conflicts, uh, competition, hard work. You know, like there's lots of action about you and it's more of a like the energy that fights, that stands up for herself and this can be actually arguments this person if you had arguments with this person they also see you as very argumentative uh, i think with all these cars like very stubborn like very confident and very very uh, determined let's see what you think of you do it and here we we have almost like sports cars we have, um, for me it's like hip-hop music almost, hip-hop, dance, uh, cars, sports cars, um, very sporty energy, very masculine I would say. And, uh, and you're always up to something, you know, with the Seven of Swords. I'm thinking you're always up to something, you're having a plan, you're having like this confidence that's mm, very strong. You're not afraid to fight for yourself, you're not afraid to talk back, you're not afraid to basically be who you are. And I think you're sometimes pushing on others. But it can simply talk about uh, very upbeat energy, very upbeat very lively and here what they think of you it can be that they think simply of a particular like your personality type your mood your atmosphere and um, you know that when they think of you they think of someone strong and stubborn someone you don't just mess with someone who how to put it um, maybe said them something to them and they're like remembering those words. But the chariot shows that you're also very good at self-control and you have like discipline and you know these things, you know. So it's, uh, I would say, a healthy, healthy, healthy uh, personality, healthy strength. <laughs> How to say, not abusive, not aggressive. There is aggression, but it might be a good aggression, because some aggression can be a good aggression. And of course, this can be dance. For me, it's something like that. So, yeah. This is what they think of when they think of you. When they hear your name, they have these kinds of, kinds of associ associations, okay? 
Okay, so let's move on now to our deck number three. This is our deck number three, and it's Tarot Lenomard by Los Carbeo. The question is, what comes to his mind when he thinks of you? Or hears your name, or both? What comes to their mind when they think of you? Oops. Okay, we have High Priestess. We have Five of Swords. We have Ace of Pentacles. What comes to their mind? Okay, so uh, I think you're the woman who writes. You the who, you are the woman who works uh, by the table at the desk. How to say it? At the desk, yeah. You're someone studious. You're someone. I'm feeling not very um, expressive, like introvert more. And uh, you know you can be uh, doing such hobbies like you know writing, drawing, cre creativity, tarot reading. Uh, something that needs thinking, something that needs, um, ref um, how to put it, uh, to be in a quiet place and think about it. So I'm getting that sort of um, thing here. And maybe you are very academic, studious, you're studying a lot. You maybe work with um, some sort of papers and books and, and things like that. So they see you uh, like always someone who's sitting at the desk and doing some work. And here we have, I think maybe they remember some funny incident when they, because we have windows here, windows talk about looking, seeing. So we have a window here and we have a window here. And it's like someone comes, maybe he comes in your house like a thief, you know, to look at you. To, to meet you or something. Maybe he stares at you while you work. So, and we have this money card, like lots of money. So, it, in thief with this much money, it looks like some sort of robbery, you know, for me. And it's like, they come to look at you also, and they come to, like, to rob them the house or something. And uh, it's all very secret and behind the, your back. You don't know it. So I'm not... I'm seriously getting this. I think it's you can also see it. Money. This man is coming into the house from the window. And he looks at you sitting by your desk and writing. And there's also a window here. Maybe it's the same window. Like this. I'm feeling you, or you're not aware of it because you're busy working. But um, in his mind, there is money. So now, so I think he remembers uh, this kind of situation when he thinks of you and he remembers you. Maybe he came for money, but he saw you and he didn't take the money. I don't know what happened to the money. But something like that secret and some sort of weird uh, incident in the house with you. And it's like you didn't see him, but he saw you. So for me it goes theft, to be honest. He remembers of a theft when he thinks of you. Now is this theft um, a, a met metaphor or is it a real theft? I don't know that. It can be both. For some people it can be a real situation. For some people it can be like a read between the lines situation. So yeah. So, we have a little bit of cheeky, something cheeky going here. A little bit of a naughty and funny in their eyes incident. Uh, a little bit embarrassing and a little bit funny. 
So they remember that situation, some situation that they would tell to friends, like, look what happened, it was so funny, I got so scared, you know, this and this happened. So for me, it seems that this might be this situation, actually. So when they think of you, when they think of your name, they remember this. And yeah, I don't feel romance here. I don't feel romance here as, as such. I'm feeling more money. More money and something not very um, uh, honest. <laughs> let's see. Okay, so this was a reading number three. Now let's move on to our reading number four. This is our reading number four and it's golden... Botticelli Tarot by Los Corbeo. The question is, uh, what does he think of? What comes to his mind when he thinks of you? We're pulling three cards. What comes to their mind when they think of you? Okay, here we have a situation of rescue, a rescuer, rescuing and help and sympathy and that sort of thing. So here we have a situation when someone, maybe this person was left alone and unloved and lonely and sad and things like that. Maybe they were dealing with something, let's say. And you came and you took them in your arms. You know. And you were like an angel for them. I don't know if it talks about someone's death actually here. Like some older person has passed. Because we see angel flying into the heaven. Or... Some I'm feeling some altruistic uh, action here. Some sort of... Uh, I think here they feel impressed and grateful to you. Um, when they think of your name, when they think of you, they think of some sort of uh, very humane action that you did to that person. Or, you know, to their close, uh, to their loved one, or a family member, or something like that. I'm feeling like they remember of some sort of favor or help. But more than help, it was some sort of sympathy expressed or empathy or some selfless action, basically, of love. <clears throat> so this card, first one, is a hermit. And we see him being quite miserable. To be honest, he has a book and he has... Uh, maybe he's writing and it's not coming right and he's tearing this book apart. He's kind of naked, just with one cloth. And he's older, you can see from his face. And he's not very happy, he's a little bit sad, like, you know, all the people can be. A little bit, um, like, a suffering of, you know, the whole thing that life is, basically. And... Uh, they may be trying to think some of something, find some sort of solution, but they're not able to. Because I see them as tearing the book apart. And then this angel-like woman comes in and picks up that child. Now this child can be actually this hermit in her arms. You know, and, uh, uh, and it's like a home also. Maybe she kind of takes him into her house. Maybe you took them into your house. Maybe you offered some sort of place to live for a person who didn't have where to live or, or something like that. So like that sort of selfless action. And uh, and here we have like Angel is leaving all the praise, you know, all the achievement, all the people, all materialistic things. And she's just flying into the heaven. So for me... It's like she, this person sees you like an angel. Um, 
Now, this can be a sick person that you're looked after and then this person passed. And from above, that person basically sees you as someone who take, uh, took care of them. So that sort of thing is going here. Now, for some people, it actually can be a death situation. Someone was ill, you took them in, and then this person went into heaven. For some people, it can be a situation that you emotionally supported a person who was lost in life, not be, being able to find an answer, and then this person was able to find the answer. And the third version can be that you basically adop adopted, no, offered for a person that was homeless, let's say, where to live, and uh, you never asked for any payback. You basically uh, just want other like, people uh, saying praises to you. How to say thank you, you're so good, you know, let's give you a reward, and you're like, I don't care because I'm just caring about the spiritual stuff, and you're just fly away. So, uh, that sort of thing is going here. Also, I was having a fourth version about a mother. But the main thing is that I'm not able to develop that version about the mother. Like motherly love, selfless love, unconditional love. But the fact is that here, selfless action is basically being made. And that's how this person remembers you. That's uh, what kind of uh, this is the kind of association that they have in their mind when they think of you, or when they remember your name or hear your name. Okay, it can be that you left after a while. Let's say you left, or someone left definitely, but who? So it's very deep, very deep, very deep. Very impressive. Okay, so this was our reading number four. And um, thank you for watching this video. Please share your comments and thoughts about this reading. Did it resonate or not? Um, it's really interesting to read for me. And hope to see you next time. Have a great night. Have a great day. Bye-bye.